In this week's video, we are doing something super exciting, and that is to give you a tour of Max Cruise's completed 44-foot sailing catamaran. It is their first finished production version of the new line. It's currently awaiting uh, a shipping container to bring it to Fort Lauderdale, where it is going to go to the East Coast agent of the US. And when that happens, hopefully Matt and I can get down there, see it in person, take it for a couple of test sails. But before it did that, or I guess while it's still awaiting that, uh, Terry over at Max Cruise was kind enough to snap a number of photos and send over to us, which of course we we're so excited to see the finished project and everything that we are working toward. But of course for you, the viewers, it is really going to help, I think, um, visualize the spaces that we're working on. Before there were the renders that we show, um, even with the production version, a few things have been tweaked and changed a little bit because this is, you know, their first ones and changes, of course, have to be made. Um, when you're first starting something. So hopefully that will give you like a much better idea when we're working in spaces of what the completed project is going to be uh, pretty similar to. So I do have about 25 photos and videos uh, that Terry over at Max Cruise did send to us. But before we go through those, I just wanna uh, bring up two things really quick. And the first one is, uh, for those of you that have been following us for a while, you'll know that our last boat was a 37-foot aluminum monohull. And for the two of us, the space really wasn't bad, so we didn't change boats so that we could have, you know, like this massive amount of space. We really, really wanted something that sailed well. And the Max Cruise um, catamaran here is a high-performance boat, which is exactly what we were looking for. And so, as we've been doing this build, you know, there have been a lot of questions coming up on like storage and general living space. So I just wanna let you know that for the two of us, it is more than enough. We are super excited for actually the huge gain that we're going to get by moving aboard this boat. But point two, for the um, kind of like North American community, I know that high performance boats like this, you do make sacrifices in space. And so Max Cruise, in case you weren't aware, is also doing 48 and 55 foot versions of this boat, which do give you still the uh, same high performance, but a bit more living space. So as you go through these and you think, wow, that is like a really nice looking boat. I wish it just had a little bit more space. They probably do have something for you. So make sure to contact Terry over at Max Cruise. Tell him that we sent you and that uh, you really like this boat, but maybe you need something just a little bit bigger and I'm sure he can work it out for you. And I do apologize if you're watching this on a big screen that some of the photos might be a little bit grainy, but of course in this day and age, a lot of people just shoot things with their cell phones. So when you go to blow it up, you know, the resolution is not gonna be as high as if this was shot in like a DSLR. So hopefully you still get a really good idea. But starting out, we see the exterior here from the port side. And one of the things that Matt and I absolutely love about this boat is the option for the light in the holes. You can see that the windows here do go through, and so this is going to be the aft berth, actually the guest one. And then running along here, the head is going to be in the center going up to the forward guest berth, so lots of light there in the halls, and then of course just these massive windows going all the way around each side, which when we were putting these cabin sides on ourselves just a few months ago, a couple of people were asking why the green foam was on the exterior and why that didn't have a gel coat uh, surface on it. And that is because it's actually just going to be getting like this glass or acrylic put over it. Matt and I are leaning toward acrylic just because it is lighter and that way we can save space and keep this boat fast. And here you can see the boat in the daytime from the exterior looking aft from the bow. And so of course we've got like the trampolines seats on the front here, which Matt and I are still debating on if we'll put in Another big question that has come up is uh, escape hatches because you haven't seen them in our boat yet, but uh, if we do get them, this is where it'll be. So this is the owner's shower area here. And then on this side, it would be in the guest bunk and these sit much higher than the water line. So hopefully no leaks, which is always a good thing. And across the front here, you can see that they have four opening hatches, which we also plan to do. So when you see our boat now, you'll see the blue taped out sections for where we eventually will kind of cut out and put opening hatches in. And just a super cool shot of what it looks like at night. 
So again, hole number four here is a little bit different than ours in the fact that it is a dual helm where we're going to be a single raised helm over on starboard. So on the starboard side here, you can kind of see where the helm is sitting behind the cockpit seats and all of the lines are run two winches here and you have kind of like your navigation screens. There's also a matching setup over here on port. But then there is the other difference we talked about too, where uh, you have the option to have this kind of center island just to give you more table space in the cockpit, although the access into it is from the inside. And here's a view from the cockpit looking kind of from the port aft section forward. Much better view of this island. The doors will slide back through there, so that was the space that we need for those each side will go out and then there's a center one which with the island here is just a partial so it closes down into this space here but since we have decided to forego that island we are actually going to have a full door that swings up but I mean you can just imagine your view from your settee when you're sitting in a tropical paradise and you have all of this view outside again another reason that we are super excited about this boat we are going to have an amazing view all the time that we're inside. And now that we're getting to more of the interior, um, one thing I wanted to point out is that um, they're still kind of working on it. So the cushions that you're going to see are temporary and the floors have not been um, fully CNC cut yet to put down. So if you're looking at it and thinking that is the final product and I kind of see like some overlapping flooring pieces here, that part is still being finished up, but we were kind of bugging Terry to get us photos. So, um, he sent them to us before everything is finally touched up. But again, we will be going to see the absolute finalized version in Florida once it gets here. So you'll get another chance to see our video walkthrough once it is fully complete. What I do want to point out in this photo is where this section lifts up. You can kind of see how it goes across this beam that's going to be in the uh, cabin top. So we'll be having something similar to that, except for again, ours will extend much further out because we are doing the full length door without that island there. This view gives you a bit better of an idea of the area to the uh, starboard side with the settee. This shows when you take the cushions and turn it into a bed here. So I know that's good for some people on passages when you don't wanna have to be so far away from the person that's helming on watch. In the corner here, we can see the nav station. There'll be some better views of that coming up soon. And to kind of give you an idea of how the galley is laid out here with two linear sides. And from this angle, you can see more of the interior window spaces. So what we've done so far, these portions here, kind of like the little extensions, have already been cut out. And we're going to be doing the same four windows as well, although we're looking to have the entire window open the hatch instead of just a hatch embedded into the acrylic. Then if we shift our focus more to the port side, you can get a better visual of the galley as soon as you're coming in from the cockpit. So you'd be stepping over the sill down here and they've got some really nice under lighting here. The section over here is our five foot countertop. And again, this is where things start to change a little bit from the renders. I think they had shown the sink on this side before, but now you can tell it's over here with a two burner electric cooktop here, plus just loads of storage space. I mean, obviously you'll have the sink basin drop down a little bit, but a great place for all of your pans and other items, pantry items. And this view looking from the corner on the port side near the aft portion of the galley gives you a much better view of this seven foot countertop here, kind of like looking into the main settee salon area. So here under the cooktop, they have again, loads of storage space. And then they have their two refrigerators here under the counter. But you can just imagine this loads of counter space for preparing meals, which I am really, really looking forward to. Here is a step back a little bit further just to focus on the galley. So you can tell that they went with a double basin sink here, drying rack seating on top. And what I love about this is the very high faucet because if there is one thing that drives me crazy on a boat, it's when I don't have enough room to wash a pan in my sink because the faucet is so low that you always like bump it. The countertops here are a white uh, Corian type 
and so that kind of just matches and fits in with this foam core on the sides here and other areas that has been fared out and gel coated. This gives you a better view kind of focusing on the settees and the galley itself and you can see that the project manager is now missing and must be hiding in another area where you go down into the holes here and behind this space is going to be the guest head. There is a little excess room in the overhead so they've decided to use it and put a pull-out drawer here. And this is our first good look at the settee so you can see the table here where it is adjustable and you can bring it down to the same height as the uh, bench itself to make it into that bed. You should be able to fit a load of people around here because this section here is seven feet long this is just over six feet. You can kind of see here where they did start to fare out a portion of the overhead and then used a partial liner here. And they also have some lights embedded and then also kind of in this beam here. Matt and I haven't fully decided how we want to do our overhead yet, but I think for me personally, the pain of having to fare all of this overhead into a perfect finish is more than I want to do. So I think we're going to sacrifice a little bit of weight there and do an entire vinyl drop down for this overhead portion and probably like the hallways and the beds as well. Oh, here's a really good view of everything. But again, great views of, and so much walking space. Everything is so easy to move around in. You have the sense of separation when you want it but then also everything is one space. It has the two entrances leading down into the port guest hall. So if you were to come down this entrance as soon as you walk in the sill, it would lead you back to the queen size aft bed. A door in the center here to lead into the head. There would be another door leading out of the head here where you have the second set of stairs leading down to the forward guest bunk. Then if you turn to look the other way, just next to the settee here, there is a space for a forward-facing navigation station. And that is one of the things Matt and I were um, talking about before. If you watched our video last week where we got aboard the Vision 444 and they had theirs more in the aft section here, it's kind of like what we were thinking could be a possibility. Then we would just um, take this cabinet from our owner's hole, bring it out further into here, um, so we get a little bit more just kind of like hanging and storage space for our clothing. And then we would turn this into a U-shaped set tee. But it turns out we don't quite have the room for what the Vision did there. So right now we are still planning on this setup here where we're just going to have a little forward-facing nav desk next to the set tee. Better look here at the navigation station. A few of you have said from when we posted these photos on Facebook that it does look a little star tracky, which yeah, with all of the different like green and blue lights, it is looking a little futuristic, which is pretty cool too. And it looks like we have once more found the project manager. Okay, but quickly switching back to this photo, I totally forgot to talk about the media station. This is the space that Matt and I were thinking about turning into a you know, like still a forward-facing nav station, but at the aft end of the bridge deck. We found out that we don't actually have the room for it, so we're just going to leave this as it is. I think a lot of our um, electronic type things will be here, and in this area somewhere, a television will be mounted so that when we are lounging on the settee, we can actually have really good views of that. Because for the past, oh my gosh, what is it now, 10 years, basically, that we've been out living this life, We've never had a television, or actually we did, it just never gets used. We've been using laptops to view things, so that's gonna be a big step up for us is having an actual TV to watch things on. All right, switching focus over to the galley one last time before we go down and take some looks into the port guest side. You can see a little bit better looking forward here with that double basin sink and that drawer that they used extends a little bit into the guest head, but again, just a great way to utilize what could have been dead space. That is one that I don't mind using. I don't necessarily need to seal up like we did in the forward bunk, which I'll show you that as well. And kind of gives you a good idea too of when these hatches are open, just the extra amounts of light you can get in. Fresh breezes rolling through, especially when you're at anchor. So we're really looking forward to that aspect of living on this catamaran. 
Okay, so if you were standing in that same position and you turn yourself about 90 degrees counterclockwise, you're now looking down these steps leading toward the master bunk in the aft side. They don't actually give a photo because they showed a photo on the owner side and it's gonna be the same exact thing, so we don't see the bed from this side, but looking down, you can see they have floor to ceiling storage here and then just kind of like an empty shelf. And then if you look forward from the steps, you can see the entrance into the guest bath, which is a wet head. So they've got the toilet kind of like tucked in the corner here. Everything in here, this bottom has been molded out. So we won't have the same debacle that we're going through right now of toilet placement. It is very uh, laid out for you on where that's going to be. And you can see, you know, access down here because it sits up a little bit. This space right here is the dagger board case, so it does intrude on the space just a little bit, but I really don't think it's going to be an issue because whenever we're in that space right now, it feels really big, much bigger than what we're used to. Then if you were to come down to the bottom of the steps, this is the view looking forward through the head and up toward that forward bunk area. So you can see the step over this little sill into the wet head and doors on both sides opening in and like the bits of storage on the uh, outer whole side of that section. Inside the guest head here, you can tell again, there's just loads of storage and they're using a bamboo veneer for all of these. So it's very pretty and it works well with the white for minimalistic details. You can see the uh, raised bowl here with the top. And then this is your shower head actually, which will come out from underneath on kind of extending coil and then you just use the space right in there to shower. Um, access down here for all of the plumbing. Then if you were to exit out this door here, you're going forward toward the kind of V-birth guest bunk. And I must have like really zoomed in on this, <laughs> but there is a walkthrough video coming in just a second to give you a better idea. So this I think is a twin size bed. And as we discussed, this is where they put that escape hatch, which also lets a lot of light in. And then this is the section that Matt and I have just closed up because for us, we didn't necessarily like need that extra little bit of space. And so now this wall just kind of extends flat until you get to these cabinets here. So here you are entering the head and you can see the toilet there next to the dagger board case. Tons and tons of cabinet storage here, your shower, your sink the other set of steps leading from the forward portion of the galley into the forward head where they've got their storage under the bed all of that's storage under the bed storage here storage here storage here so you can see where we decided to take that out and just all the light from those windows over here and actually matt and i are going to be turning a section of this into our pantry which i think you can kind of see This is probably the best view, but some of this space here is actually gonna be extra spillover pantry for food, especially when we're provisioning for longer trips when we don't have access to really good grocery stores or when we're doing uh, ocean crossings. Now we have a quick jump over to the owner's hall and this is a photo looking at our master queen size bed. So right now we're facing aft and you can see that there's going to be an opening hatch above our heads here. And then Matt and I think are gonna do a bit larger of a hatch, um, kind of like where the headboard is, but still just great lighting all the way through here with those side windows. What we're still kind of working on right now, I think Matt's project is doing these support beams along the side. So that's gonna jut out just a little bit. And then we're gonna have this overhead support here that's a portion of bulkhead seven. But I really like how they have personal lighting back here. And then the space behind this is actually the cockpit seats. Not really any clothing storage in here, but we're gonna have loads of it in our master hallway. And then a small portion under the bed here. And this is the view looking forward if you're in the master bed. So this is the sliding door that can close you off from the salon. If you have any guests over and you want your privacy, you can just kind of see these bamboo doors here. That is a little bit of storage space that kind of kicks into where that media station is in the um, aft right corner of the bridge deck. But again, you're gonna have all this storage here, all this storage here and leading into 
our favorite topic right now of the master head and vanity. <laughs> All right, so this I think is going to be one of the most helpful sections for the past couple of videos. Last week you saw us kind of trying to position our toilet and in the renders, it does show that the toilet was originally up closer to the shower. But again, with these being the first boats built, um, like little changes were made. Bulkhead four actually got pushed forward just a tiny bit. So now there wasn't enough space between bulkhead four and that molded shower pan to stick a toilet. So both us and Max Cruz have now gone and placed our toilet um, just forward of bulkhead five, which is this here. And theirs looks to be on about a 45 degree angle. I think ours, we ended up going just a little bit further um, outboard towards the hull. But again, both of ours will be kind of sitting up on pedestals here. And then you can just kind of make out back there an access spot for all of the plumbing and hoses whenever you need to get in there to kind of like work on the toilet. You still have great access. And then there will be a better photo looking at, but while we're kind of looking at the section here, they have decided to install a washing machine, which I think is a great option for a lot of cruisers. Matt and I, in the 10 years that we've been out, have found it super easy to um, come across kind of laundromats where you can drop off your clothing. They'll wash, dry, and fold it. You can pick it up the next day, and it's usually really inexpensive. I mean, to be honest, like around a dollar a pound. So <laughs> we've carried enough clothes in the past to like last us six weeks between washings. I'm not even kidding. And so when we come across one of those places, we just bring in all of our laundry, pick it up the next day. It hasn't been an issue. So that's what we're doing. We're going to be using this as more cabinet space. But you can tell they've got extra space up here. And once I back out further, here we go. Um, there is also some kind of just like counter space on the outboard side cabinetry underneath small shelves and so as Matt and I have been having these discussions of losing counter space for a better positioned toilet we are not at all worried about space that we're sacrificing because you can see how much is still here you know you've got the outboard side for shelves and cabinets you've got these areas which can hold all of your toiletries your towels your sheets it seems endless but i do want to quickly show you what we are coming from on the aluminum boat so you'll kind of see the toilet space we had there and the storage space and why we have no concerns on if this is going to be big enough for us so the video we have here is a little bit before and after shots of our head of the 37 foot aluminum cutter which you can see it totally got ripped out from where it was when we purchased the boat. But that was the only head that we had and that was the size of it. And for us, it was a wet head. So we installed just a simple setup with kind of like a spray that you could turn the nozzle on and then um, put that above you for showering. Just press the button when you wanted the wa water on so that way it wasn't wasteful. And we really, really loved that. So you can see where my makeup bag was. That was like one kind of small storage area and we tried to keep the counter along here generally neat. But then that was our toilet and cabinet and that was all we had on that boat. So as you can tell, this is a huge, huge upgrade for us. Also, if you are new to our channel, I will put the link for that boat tour up above here. Um, it's kind of a fun way to go through and show what the boat looked like when we purchased it and what we spent two years turning it into. So as you can tell, we like to do our remodels, but with the Max Cruise here, we're so happy to start out with a brand new hull because with all the work that we did last time, it was still a 1983 boat when we went to sell it, even though everything else was new. All right, so finishing up on the owner side here, this is a view from the shower looking aft all the way back to the master bed. So you can kind of see that counter more, the toilet, and the walkthrough here in a second will show those storage spaces a bit better. So yeah, here you can see all that cabinet space still behind the uh, sink and above the toilet. Hi, Georgie girl. Are you lonely? All the cabinet space on the outboard side and just kind of like extra counter for little things. And then as we walk back, I'm gonna pause it here a second. These are sliding cabinets and all of that is hanging storage shelves. All of our clothes will go there. 
Sorry, Georgie's been really needy today. Say hi, Georgie girl. Yeah, all you want is attention and milk. <laughs> yeah, normally she's not on this table. Get off. Um, and then as we continue to walk forward more, you'll see there's even more storage space on the outboard side. That is one that Matt and I have been debating on if we need or not because it does... <laughs> there she goes again. Matt and I have been debating on if we do need that or not because it does, when it goes um, floor to ceiling like that, it blocks some of that great light from the acrylic window. Again, more storage space, but from what you've seen us come from, personally, I think we'll be fine still being able to store everything we need and not having that there. We haven't made a full decision yet. That is a big discussion. All right, so walking back, you can see the steps that lead down from the um, salon area with the door closed. So right now the hull is fully shut off. And then this cabinet here is the available space behind that media station. So that's probably good for a lot of our electronics, um, kind of everything that runs our systems. And going back into our queen bed, again, with storage areas down there. Tons of space for Matt and I to sleep without kicking each other. And then that's where the cockpit seats would be. And these great windows with views. <laughs> and then opening the hull, or the slider there. And there you have the tour of a completed Max Cruise 44 sailing catamaran. Um, again, since we're building our own, we might make slight changes here and there to what fits us best. And Terry does give great options for any of those designing get the production version. If you go to their site, it can list all of the different options, like three cabins, four cabins, dual aft helm stations, or a single raised helm. There's a bunch of stuff they can do. So again, if you are interested in this version or one of their larger versions, um, make sure to talk to Terry at Max Cruise and tell him that you heard about them through Matt and Jessica. But now that we have these images, again, as we go to work forward, we'll probably show you this finished one as we're working so you can kind of get a better um, spatial awareness and what the finished product looks like so that it, I, it can be really hard to imagine with that green foam I know and before any furniture has been installed. So let us know what you think in the comments. Let us know what things that you love that you think we should really keep and just any other ideas that you have. Um, I think we'll probably be doing some different colors for ours again. We're looking at that uh, roof oak for the veneers, possibly like a darker floor, darker countertops. That's the great thing about building it ourselves too, is we can kind of like pick and choose all of those little design things. That's where I'm focusing too, where we want liners, where we want to fare. So, but this gave us a really good idea of what we're working toward and has totally lit a fire under our butts because now we can absolutely picture this on the water, picture ourselves sailing with those amazing views from our settee as we look out the cockpit, of course, enjoying them from the cockpit. So yeah, we're really excited to continue working on this and uh, still don't have a specific finish date, but as soon as we have a better idea, we'll let you know. So thank you for watching and we hope you enjoyed this tour.